I, this is the video that I've been dreading. One of the videos that I've been dreading. I was hoping that since we discovered that the microphone had stopped working, um, I was hoping that I wouldn't have to make this video remake it. Um, turns out that the, um, you, I've mentioned a few of the videos have been, um, you know, the mic cut out and, you know, I lost about a 40 minute conversation. Uh, that conversation and the, the few minute conversation preceding that was details about why Brittany started therapy. Um, so for those of you watching, um, just know that, uh, this video contains, um, uh, talking around assault and essay. So, um, if you don't want to, uh, see that, hear about that, skip this video. So I got to talk about that because at this point that you're watching, uh, she has already mentioned going to therapy and seeing her therapist and going through all of that. <clears throat> so let's get started. Brittany was very, very meticulous about everything. Um, stuff had to be in the fridge the right way. Um, floors had to be cleaned in a certain way. I couldn't go to the store and pick up food um, unless she sent me a picture of the exact brand and the exact label that had to be on the brand. It was pretty extreme. Um, and all of that was born from her trauma. Um, she, um, she experienced a lot of abuse, actually. Um, <clears throat> so Brittany experienced a lot of trauma in her youth, um, in particular from uh, her, her father. Oh, and just to, just to clarify, um, her father was the was an abuser, but was not part of the SA stuff. So, um, just clarifying that. Um, her father was not a good man. Um, her father was not a good man. And to say that he was abusive was an understatement. Um, knew how to get his point across physically without lo lose without leaving wounds, without losing leaving bruises, without. without hurting, sorry, without making it look like his daughter was hurt. Um, Brittany was, she knew that if she could come home or if she got home from school and could clean and things were just right and just perfect, then she would be hurt less, yelled at less, emotionally or physically abused less. Um, <clears throat> so one day I, um, um, so at one point, 
when Brittany and I were in the hotel room um, and she told me how to put the exact location to put the uh, the leftovers from one of our meals while we were in Houston. She told me the exact location to put it. And she burned all this energy, like not really arguing with me, but just like, baby, just let it go. Like, it's okay. I, I, I will put it where it needs to go. You don't have to worry about this. <sighs> you're spending so much energy trying to control every little aspect of your life that you're burning yourself out. Like you, you're exhausted all the time. You're hurting yourself. And at that point we were doing something. And I think there was something either in the business or something with, uh, uh something that, I was doing or she had to do and I told her baby you just you can't plan out all the little details for this you're just gonna have to put something to page and send it you're just gonna have to do it you spend 10 minutes put a time limit give 10 minutes you don't have to spend an hour drafting the perfect explanation and when she realized that she only had so many hours in the day to do it. Um, and in her mind, it wasn't enough time for her to do the thing that she needed to do. She broke down. And I remember like it was yesterday, she just, she started I don't want to say bawling, but she was just almost catatonic and she was just moaning and she said, if I don't, my father's going to hurt me. She hadn't seen her father in, in years. <sighs> hadn't seen the man in years. Barely spoke to him. She escaped, you know, uh, she escaped from, uh, from where she lived and came here, came to Mississippi to get away, literally to escape the day she graduated. And and here she was having a, an emotional breakdown because she couldn't, she knew that she couldn't do or didn't have enough time to do all the things that she had to do to make her environment perfect, to make her response to somebody perfect in just the way she wanted it. And it resulted in her crying out that her father was going to hurt her if she didn't do this just right. And I stopped her. After, after I calmed her down, I didn't say I stopped her after, after she calmed down and I held her about an hour later, I told her, I said, baby, do you realize what you said? You said your father's going to hurt you. Like your father's not here. And it dawned on her that the abuse that she suffered, the trauma that she experienced she was gonna need a therapist. She was gonna need someone who could help her deal with PTSD because she had it. She had PTSD. She had been traumatized to the point of changing her entire life just to survive. After that trip to Houston, we came home. We came home and we decided, yes, we're getting a therapist, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna do some research. We're gonna find somebody that, that fits Brittany. 
And um, one day, I don't even know how to begin to talk about this. From the age of 13, Brittany was She was groomed. And forced to commit acts with other people. She internalized it. Um, she managed to get away from that um, when the individual died, actually, uh, when she was 17, I think. Um, she managed to get away and um, Up until this point in our story, in mine and Brittany's story, she always referred to him as the abuser, as her fiance, her ex-fiance. They had a complicated relationship, but what relationship isn't complicated? And I don't know what happened, but after we were discussing therapy and all of this, and I said, baby, why do you call him that? And she's like, well, we, we were planning on getting married, you know, that yada, yada, yada. And she would talk about it. And I said, I had to literally sit her down and say, you were 13. You were not able to consent. You were groomed. You were, and I had to spell out the whole thing in blatant terms that weren't so complicated and twisted and made up in her head to be this protecting thing. And while it is traumatic and terrible to say, and even worse for her to live with, at that moment, she, um, a couple days later, she said, yeah, I'm still pretty, pretty wobbly from hearing all that and from realizing it. But it was like a weight was taken off her shoulders. It was no longer a, it was no longer a, a complicated relationship that involved abuse and so on and so forth. It was a literal trafficking situation where she was tortured, physically, emotionally, mentally tortured by this guy. And, um, after that realization, clicked in place for her. She finally agreed, yeah, I need therapy. She went through so much. She went through so much.